Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on the Walters Merchant's Row Kit. I've got the assembly to do, I've got some more painting, I've got to do the interiors, I've got some weathering, I'm hoping to do some environmentals. I've actually got quite a bit of work to do, so let's jump on into it. I started by adding the doors to the front of the building. Before cementing these pieces together, I scraped and filed away the paint that would interfere with getting a solid weld. Next, I added all of the glazing to the windows. This clear plastic is not styrene, so I'll need to use CA glue instead of styrene cement here. The kit came with some shades and blinds for the windows, as well as some interior views. I don't really like the Venetian blinds, so I made a copy of the sheet and cut out some additional shades to cover my windows. Before installing the interior views, I assembled the front and the sides. I felt like this would help me get a better idea of how they would look as I adjusted them. In the end, I'm not sure it really mattered all that much. When adding the cornice, I didn't get it placed quite right and left a gap. I filled this with some putty and will need to touch up the paint a little later. I didn't really like the interior views included in the kit. They don't really match the period that I'm modeling. I found some images on the internet and passed a couple of them through an online coloring service. After resizing them, I printed them up along with a couple of signs to place above the doors of the paint shop and the bike shop.
After trimming to size, I glued the interior views in place. I then assembled the back wall and roof, adding the firewalls and the chimneys. Now it was time to add the back stairs and the downspouts. I painted them sky gray, just like the windows on the back. I sponge painted some rust on these pieces before attaching them to the back of the model. Once in place, I added some further rusting with washes.
The final piece of assembly are the signs for the front of these buildings. I started by painting the trim on the signs. Buff for the hardware store. Blue for the paint store. Off-white for the bike shop. I printed up some more signs and began to experiment with the best way to get these trimmed and in place. The hardware sign was easy enough. I'm basing the look of my downtown area on Commercial Street in Springfield, Missouri. Rathbone Hardware opened in 1897 and still exists today. The curve on the paint store sign was a little bit more of a challenge. I found McCurdy paint in an old picture of Commercial Street. Even more of a challenge was the sign for the bike shop. After trimming it to the right width and height, I lined up the paper on the right and used my fingernail to press the outline of the sign on the paper. I reinforced this line with my X-Acto knife and then trimmed it. Hickory Bicycles is named after a mentor of mine from high school who was a lifelong model railroader and a cycling enthusiast. It's not flawless, but it's good enough. The decals that came with the kit included a small clock. I'm adding that to the top of the hardware store sign. Well, I got a little water on the sign and ruined it. I guess I'll have to redo that. I'm not quite sure what these square bits on the roof are. I'm guessing they are hatches for roof access. I painted them black. Then I did some chipping on the edges with deck tan. And added a little rust. I also dry brushed them with some light brown. I applied my standard dark wash of Russian Air Force dark green and dark gray to the whole roof. Then I added a dark green filter to the corners and edges. Anywhere water might stand longer, an algae might grow. 
While I had it out, I used it some on the sidewalk too. I also added some gloss medium to selected areas of the roof and sidewalk to simulate a bit of moisture. The final piece on the roof is to finish the chimneys. I painted the inside of the chimney caps with some black. I then used some black pigment for soot. With the roof done, I applied a dark wash to the entirety of the building. Taking a tip from the train freak, I added a little isopropyl alcohol to the wash to make it flow better. I waited until after the wash to add the signs. I didn't want to run the risk of getting the signs wet and ruining them. As one final detail, I added a bit of grass to some cracks in the sidewalk. In the future, I might add some more environmental details, but I'll wait until it is on the layout for that. I'm also planning to add a mural to the side, but I need to figure out its placement on the layout first. I want to make sure that the mural can be seen. I'll be tackling some of this layout planning in the next video. I'm still trying to get the track plan and some of the landscape nailed down. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and those links are in the description below, along with a list of tools and supplies I use. Thanks for joining me for this episode, and please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.